Bye. Bye. Are you, are you a member of the COA board? Yes, yes. I'm Jean Harrigan. Hi, I'm Becky Bash with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Nice to see you, Becky. Actually, um, I'm the chair. I'm glad you came on early. Wanted oh, great. to check in with you. Do you want to go over everything and then take questions, or do you want people to comment and question as you go through? I think it works well to do it as we go through. Um, last time we got up to um, health and community services. Um, so I was just gonna start after that unless anyone has any comments on the earlier pieces. Um, yeah, and then I was gonna suggest, you know, if if there's a group that wants to meet on their own and sort of go through this in more depth, that's fine too. I don't wanna, you know, force this on anyone. <laughs> um, but it seemed like this was a good good place to go through it. And there was some good discussion last time. So we did make some changes based on that. Yeah, great. Yeah, certainly if there's lots of um, questions and comments, um, if discussion is going strong well past six, we, we can certainly look to host another gathering without you. I appreciate how busy you probably are. So okay. and then we, yeah. we could certainly, um, you know, circle back with you with any, you know, suggestions or whatever that folks may have. Okay, great. Hi, Helen. Hi there. Hi, everyone. So I'll, I'll be hosting tonight. I'm uh, not Al and I'm acting for Haley. So we had Zoom difficulties today. So I'm Zooming off of Al's account. So. Okay. so is Haley not gonna be with us tonight? Um, I'm stepping in for Haley um, at the last okay. minute. I'm not sure. Okay. I've read everything. I've read all the material. So I'm up to snuff. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I saw any comments in the actual document, so. Hi, Kay. Hi, Kay. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. For some reason, it gets really cold here after 4.30 in town hall. I don't know if it's because there aren't so many bodies here or what, but I always put my coat in for evening meetings. Yeah. Freezing in here. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad you can't sneak outside. It's beautiful. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Hi, Norma. Hi there. How are you? Hi there. <laughs> It's nice to see Norma. She used to take care of my children. 
I know my daughter was in there a few times too, Norma. <laughs> I think it was that, that classic strep throat. <laughs> <laughs> then they hate you after you've done your culture. <laughs> Fond memories. <laughs> yeah. uh, we just got home from the Cape and, and uh, I had to run to the downtown Amherst to bring a carload of cartons for the plant sale that oh. I've been collecting from yeah. the liquor store. And Hi, Dennis. Hi. Nice <laughs> to see you. Nice to see you, too. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah. Hi, Dennis. Hello, hello. I'm, I'm going to get my coffee in this. Hey, do you have a cold or allergies? Allergies. I think I have them too. My nose is running all the time these days. Yep. Hi, John. You? Welcome. Hi Thank there. Thank you. Hello. Good to see you. Hi, Ann. You're back again. No, it's right there on the sink. Thank how you. long? Uh, it's five o'clock. How long do you want to wait back here? A few more minutes? Get people, give people a few more minutes to check in. Yeah, that's up to you all. I'm, I'm fine waiting. We'll wait another minute or two. Close. John, you're going to be busy tonight, aren't you? Uh, it looks like, yes. Well, Are you going to another meeting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Six, seven o'clock. I get a, oh, boy. a brief break. Wow. <laughs> Food, I hope you have food awaiting somewhere. I think so, yes. <laughs> My wife has promised to have food. <laughs> Good. Well, it's 5.02. We could, could get started if everyone's okay with that, and especially Becky. You're really, it's your meeting here. Um, as everyone knows, I think most of you, I'm Helen McMillan, the program director and social worker for the Amherst Senior Center. I'm filling in uh, for Haley tonight. Um, I had Zoom problems with... Uh, we didn't have time for IT to fix, so I'm actually zooming in on Al Cheever's account. So I'm a hidden identity uh, host <laughs> for the meeting tonight. <laughs> yes. And welcome to Becky. Thanks. Um, so I just wanted to, um, so this meeting is scheduled to be an hour or hour and a half? Right? Sure. I had an hour at one point and then an hour and a half, but I, what did other people were told? Um, the the agenda had an hour. Okay. okay, that's what I was originally told. An hour. Yeah. yeah. That's why I okay. Say. Yep. Well, I thought what we would do tonight. Um, last time I met with you all, um, and I, I think most of you were at the last meeting. Um, we went through the goals and actions um, in the age and dementia friendly. Um, action plan, um, or it was actually part of the community assessment. We've since um, shifted a few things around and put those into an action plan. Um, so I'm happy to take any comments. Um, we got up to health and community services. Um, so I'm happy to take any comments if, if anyone has them up to there. Otherwise, I was just going to start um, on the next section, which is communication, information, and technology. Um, and then um, another, another comment I just wanted to make is I'm happy if any group, you know, if, if this group or, you know, I know John was on the housing committee before, um, if there's any group that wants to look at any of these sections in more depth and, and sort of really think about, you know, 
are these the actions that are most important um, and want to come back, um, that's fine too. Um, I have found that I, I can get more funding from our funders so we can go beyond June 30th um, if needed. So oh. don't worry about, um, about timing so much. I want to make sure you're all happy with this um, and, um, and then talk about whether it goes to the uh, town, is it town council? I can never, or city council <laughs> um, for, for review and approval of submitting it to AARP. Um, so just want to open up if anyone had any comments based on what I have sent out so far. And what page did you wrap up on last time on the? Um, the last time in the assessment, we and we we ended with health and community services. So I'm going to I'm looking at the action plan now. And mm -hmm. so that is on. Let's see, in the action plan, it's page seven. Um, so we have gone through housing. Let's see, we've gone through communication, housing, um, and then dementia-friendly community goals and actions. Uh, we've gone through transportation and buildings and outdoor spaces and health and community services. Um, yeah, so we're, we're, we'd start on, I guess, communication. So is everyone good starting there? And then, you know, we can always go back and look at, at, at what, we've, what we've done if you if we have time um, and you wanna sort of look at those again. The other thing um, is that we haven't yet filled in who the lead entity would be and potential partners um, and also need to think about priority level um, and any, any measures. Um, which I'm, I'm happy to fill in the measures, but um, it's sort of up to all of you about priority level, you know, and, and what we've been doing is, is putting higher priority um, actions at the beginning. Um, so just sort of order them by priority as much as we can, and then sort of think about what are the top three actions in each section, in each section that you wanna take on going forward. Um, so if no comments right away, I'll, I'll start off and I'm just going to share my screen. Um, this is the, the action plan again. So it's um, broken into the nine domains of an agent dementia friendly community. Um, and so we're on communication, information and technology goals and actions. Um, and these again are all suggestions based on you know the assessment we did and um, you know some examples from other communities so please feel free to let me know if anything just doesn't seem appropriate for Amherst or if there's anything you want to add I can I can certainly do that as we go um, so the first goal is ensure that all residents have access to information about policies and programs that provide opportunities for health and community engagement. Um, older adults in, in acquiring equipment and training on how to use it and provide assistance with accessing low cost or free bro broadband service. That's the first one. Um, and I have as partners, um, the COA and the library. Um, we could also probably Look at UMass. Um, I imagine there um, are classes there that that do that kind of thing, training on on how to use computers and and iPads. Um, and Helen, you guys are working on that now, right? Uh, relationship with UMass. Um, providing equipment and training on how to use laptops or? Yes, or yes. We have a, 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 an equipment loaning uh, project going on. We have a half a dozen iPads, not a lot, but out for loan. Okay. And we have a, a RCP volunteer doing a lot of tech training. And then also UMass students are coming in here and doing tech training as well. Okay. Okay, great. Um, I'll put RSVP in there too. 
And then provide accommodations for vision and hearing impaired on the town website and in spaces used for community meetings, um, such as closed captioning and interpreters. Um, and yeah, so I know some of that is already happening. Um, and yeah, feel free to jump in as, as I go. Yes. Um, I I'd like to jump in on that. Can you, sure. uh, am I unmuted? Yes. Uh, it's Ann Burton speaking. Um, on the town website and other spaces, vision impaired people need black lettering. And although it's just adorable to be able to have colorful or gray lettering or other things, it makes it almost impossible for people who are vision impaired to read parts of the website. And somebody who, who does the website design must become aware that um, contrast is very important for people who are visually impaired. So when you well, and just like we're looking right now, the line that says age friendly communication information technology, it's yellow with nice dark type over it. So that should be like that would be easy for someone to read. Because it is large enough when you get to, yes, and when you get to small things, you will find when you go on the town website that there are many changes in the color of type and the contrast is missing and contrast is extraordinarily important. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, okay, and then develop a town policy for translation of materials available to the public and interpretation at public meetings and identify funding needs for these services. That's something we kind of started to talk about when we offered the Spanish forum. You know, there, there wasn't really a policy for how, how to provide um, information in other languages. Can we go back to the 8.2? Yeah. I just wanted to mention that all new buildings and new uh, renovations um, are providing that um, material or equipment for people who are hearing impaired. Like we're building a, a renovation, um, an addition to the North Amherst Library, and that will have um, accommodations. And any um, building that goes on at the library will also have those same types of accommodations, because that's it's required these days. Okay, required by the town. I think it's required by the state by the building okay. code. Mm -hmm. So is that um, mostly sound systems or do they provide also headsets? I think they're gonna provide headsets. Okay. Yeah, that's my understanding. Okay. Um, and then we have invite an audiologist to give a presentation on um, free smartphones and use of captioning available to income eligible people. That's something that came up, I think, in another community. Um, and just want to see if you're aware of that or um, if that sounds like something that would be helpful. Um, if we're going to do something like that, uh, again, I'm not really sure who, who does it, but that could be a, something that uh, um, the Council on Aging could do in collaboration with Amherst Neighbors as a way yeah. to assure a broader audience. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, and I should probably put Amherst Neighbors up there too. Um, and then investigate the use of technology to provide access to books, music, and online programming for people with visual, audio, and cognitive impairments and offer workshops on these topics at the Amherst Senior Center or library. Um, 
Um, so of these, any top priorities? Do these seem all seem useful? Yes, to me they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're, they're all useful, Becky. The only question is, where does the person power come from in order to implement these as well as the other actions that you've presented us with? I think until we have person power, honestly, it's a little hard to say, oh, well, this is the thing that's important because lots of things are important. And I think that uh, it's really up to the people on this call and others who are interested to say, well, I'll take the lead on that and I need some other people to help. And if nobody's saying that, then whatever you're talking about is not a priority by definition. Yeah, um, I think that that's true. Um, I, I also think that to implement this plan, you'll probably want to engage other you know, have a, a committee to in charge of implementation and engage other town departments um, as you can. I mean, some of this I would think will go to, um, you know, the community engagement department in terms of the website and translation and stuff. I mean, I think there's different different sectors that can help out in addition to the Council on Aging. Um, so this kind of provides a roadmap. Um, but <laughs> yes, okay, Anne. I yeah, I'm I'm very confused by this. Um, are we equating the senior center and the Council on Aging as the same thing? Because the Council on Aging does not have personnel. The senior center does have personnel, so. When you say the lead entity or partner is the Council on Aging, are you meaning the Senior Center or are you meaning the Council on Aging? Yeah, you're right. It's probably the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. I sort of think of the Senior Center as staffing the Council on Aging. <laughs> the Council on Aging has oversight. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I think you're going to... Um, Yes, I'm, I'm not sure of that. I don't know that the Council on Aging oversees the Senior Center. No. The Senior Center certainly helps the Council on Aging, but it is not the Council on Aging's job to oversee the Senior Center. We do work together, but... So I think those are excellent distinctions, Anne. Um, I know in some communities, a COA term, the senior center term are interchangeable. But here, I know going back to Mary Beth, people have been very clear about the distinct roles. And the only people that have staff, paid staff, are this, is the senior center. Exactly. The, the right. Aging is a town council. It's voluntary. And it's an advisory group. An advisory group. Yeah, you're right. The town manager supervises the executive director of the senior center. Exactly. Not the council on aging. Yeah, exactly. you're right. That's totally true. Um, yeah, and as as we go through, if I mean, if if the council on aging does have any priorities, and and if you think there's anything that you know, you could take the lead on. Oh, Chris, Christina, you have your hand up. Yes, um, I am responding to Anne's concern about websites being accessible. And what I wanna say is that Microsoft Edge and also um, the web browsers, they can read articles, entire articles um, on websites for you, Microsoft Edge and Google, the Google Assistant. They can read it for people that have uh, impairment and prefer not to, you know, look at the little, little, little letters. They could read this document if it was, 
if you ask them to, and if it was on the internet, or if it's on your desktop, if it's a Word document, you can also make them read it. So that's only for people who have Microsoft. It, that's not going to work with people who have mm -hmm. Apple. Computers. Well, well, it depends. If you once you publish it to the internet, and it's a PDF document, and you post mm -hmm. it, it the browser can read it. That Microsoft Edge can read it. Okay, so that might be another thing for um, a workshop or something um, at the library to, to just make sure people know about. I'll add. Um, you know, and having uh, made the distinction between the Council on Aging and the Senior Center, um, what are your or what are Haley's priorities as we talk about these actions? Um, I have not, I have to be honest, I have not, I've been too busy doing my double job as program manager, social worker here. So I have not been coming to these meetings. So I'm, and I haven't had a chance to talk to Haley about what her priorities are. I think she's probably waiting to see this final report. And I think that would be somewhere where maybe the council on aging could say, we suggest yeah. you consider X, Y, or Z as a priority as an advisory board. Yeah. Yeah, you could certainly say to Haley, we really would love it if you focus on, uh, I'm just going to point out 8.2, you know, and six and 9.2. But Haley definitely sets the priorities for the whole senior center. All right, this will, this will, if, if you all have priorities here, I think, you know, some of these are more important. Haley can also apply for funding and, you know, do programming accordingly. Um, and some of these we're already doing. Um, as we go through it, some we're, we're already doing, we can always expand or improve and, and some we do need to address. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, well, let's keep going through and then maybe you can tell me if there's any of these that, that rise to the top for you. Um, so goal nine is facilitate a culture of support and acceptance for residents of all ages and abilities. Um, so provide training for municipal staff, community and civic organizations, faith communities and businesses on how to recognize and effectively communicate with customers with dementia and other cognitive disabilities. Um, ensure that printed information, um, including official forms or invoices, um, as large lettering with main ideas in bold type, simple and straightforward sentences in simple language and is available in multiple languages as needed. I'd like to add to that um, because I have seen uh, our public, our bulletin boards at the senior center and various other places. Um, if you have too much material on them, it's not possible to for people who are visually impaired or people who are having other kinds of problems, uh, cognitive impairment, uh, they're overwhelmed. It's all information overload, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So someone has to be constantly on top of editing what is important on those boards. They do get overloaded. Okay. Um, edit what's important on bulletin boards so that they are not overwhelming or something like that. Um, Norma, you're up next too. Norma. Yeah, I just wondered, is, is there an IT person for the overall administration of the town? Well, we have an IT department. Okay. And so there's many, a, I yeah. must admit, I can't quote how many people. Uh, like everyone I've heard, they're probably understaffed, but. Um, there is we, a communication specialist who works within the IT department. Her name is Brianna Sunrud, and she deals with a lot of these issues. But as um, Becky or someone just said, maybe it was Helen who said, um, people are overwhelmed the amount of work that they have to do, but she is the person who's in charge of this 
type of thing. Yeah. Um, Christina? Go ahead, Christina. I'm saying that perhaps a volunteer from the high school, young people are always looking for things to get involved in. An internship with the town, doing that bulletin on a weekly basis, just making some suggestions. Even college students would find that interesting volunteering in the senior center and being in charge of making sure that the bulletin is in good shape at all times. But in terms of the, the language and things being clearer and more accessible, that would be somebody in charge of communication in general. But keeping things uh, up to date, that would certainly, you can certainly engage young people to join in on us and help. That's a good idea. Yeah. And that's part of, you know, having this action plan. Like if you do have volunteers, what are some things you could give them to do? So, you know, if, if it's in here, maybe that will that will help. Norma? Yeah, I I had written up some some notes, but they got lost in the transit coming coming home. But um I many towns have in order to graduate, and then I think this goes for high schoolers and um, college colleges too, that they need to do some community service as you know a requirement for graduation. And I would think that something like that with any of these things, whether it's you know understanding how to you know get get on the internet and or um, you know, sometimes I don't know the language. When I've lost a password, I don't know if they're talking about, you know, the username or the, <laughs> so I I think that that's really hard if you've not been brought up with it. Um, but I think that's something to look into. I mean, our grandchildren are all out of college now, but um, they had programs in their schools in, California and in New York um, that they had to uh, do 75 hours of community service. It, I mean, that was their stipulation, but it could be any, any amount, I don't know. That's a good idea. We should look into seeing whether, the, I know when my daughter was in the high school, they did have that. I, I don't know if they're yeah. still doing that at Emerson High School in the junior high, we could check into that. Yeah. Yeah, do you, so you don't currently work with high school students, Ellen? We we may have some come in. Uh, we have some college students coming in. Uh, okay. But we, we haven't really engaged the high school students, I'll have to yeah. say, but definitely the college students more. Yeah, okay. Um, Probably the college students have one, a more flexible schedule. They're not on the all day at school, then doing sports, and by then at supper time, you know. Yeah. Okay, and then this last one is just ensure telephone answering services give instructions slowly and clearly and tell callers how to repeat message at any time, offer options for people with hearing impairments. Um, so I guess that would be municipal departments, or I don't know who does the town phone system. Would that be IT? Well, IT does the tech part, but some of this is almost things that each department could implement themselves, like giving instructions slowly and clearly. It's almost like someone needs to tell everyone in the town, could you double check your messages and do A, B, and C in this area yeah. here? I know I always, in my own recording at work, because I know I'm working with seniors, repeat my phone number and my email, I repeat it twice and I do it slowly. And so in just a few weeks, they'll compliment me. So you're the only one that repeats your phone number or repeats your email. Um, yeah, because they get to me through a central line and then they don't have my extension definitely definitely for a callback. So it, it almost would be someone has to tell everyone in town that we need to be thinking about that as we record our own uh, messages. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, and then, so do any of these rise to the top for any of you um, in terms of priorities that you think the senior center should take on or the town? Seems like 8.1 is really important, right? To make sure that people have the equipment and know how to use it. Mm. Yeah, and there's actually a grant out there now. Helen, do you know if you are you guys applying for that? And uh, are you talking about the? There was a community grant with joint with um, the Northampton Senior Center, and I must admit I'm not up to what happened with that. I thought that it was a regional a, grant for uh, iPads. Maybe so there's, a, new? there's a there's a, a grant out there now through the executive office of elder affairs that each community can get up to a hundred thousand dollars to mm. for equipment and hiring people to do trainings and access to internet um all of that so i i know haley knows about it she was interested in potentially partnering with another community and i'm not sure it's due Ooh, it's due Monday, so oh, I boy. guess she would she would know if she's applying. Right, but, right. Yeah, I apologize. I'm not up to date on whether we applied or not. Yeah. So that's something that's out there. Um, okay, and then I can also check in with Haley if 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 you all don't have feel strongly about any of these. Number 8.2, some of that is already being done. We have a um, an, uh, ADA transition plan that we have um, got, we hired a consultant and we got this transition plan done to cover all municipal facilities. And it um, talks about some of these needs, both physical needs as well as hearing and vision needs. So um, we apply for what they call an MOD grant pretty much every year to try to make some of these things happen. And that's a grant that we get through the state mass office of disabilities, I think it is. So okay. even though, um, you know, we're talking about people who are elderly or have dementia, but um, they're often people who have disabilities. So anyway, we're, we're doing a lot of that. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't say a lot, but we're doing it consistently. That's a better way to put it. Um, so okay. that's the town, the planning department, and um, the facilities department. Okay. And I thought um, I don't. Maybe we didn't get the money. I thought there was a, an effort to get hearing um, assistive devices for hearing impaired here in the Bang Center, retrofitting some of the rooms that were had regular meetings. Did that happen? I don't know, but the facilities director um, Jeremiah would probably know. Okay, I think Maureen was working on that grant. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I know. It'll probably go to Montague. Right. <laughs> right. I thought. Okay. Um, I have a suggestion for 8.3, the possibility that we could utilize UMass or Amherst College students to assist with translation. Okay. Yeah, I know your web, your um, engaged Amherst website has the the language option, um, so that's that's really helpful. But yeah, once it comes to public meetings, um, it's sometimes good to have a policy there. I'll I'll put the community engagement department. I'm going to ask Brianna. Don't worry. <laughs> um, before I pile this on her. Um, and also, I mean, when we did the Spanish forum, um, uh, we got help from, I'm forgetting the name of, of that new department that works with you guys. Cress. Oh, Cress. 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 Yes. Yeah, they were really helpful. They actually, one of their, um, one of their staff uh, gave the presentation in Spanish. Um, so that was, that's great. Okay, um, I guess moving on, if there's no other comments on that one, um, we have social participation and inclusion. Um, 
to our older adults and people with dementia have opportunities for social interaction through programming, planning of events, and access to technology. So there's going to be some overlap. Um, and first, we have developed programming with UMass and local schools to encourage intergenerational interaction and support. Um, so that kind of overlaps with the, the, the one before. Um, work with the DEI office to identify translation and interpretation needs of older residents and identify funding sources. That's also was sort of uh, included above. And it's not, is, is it called, a, do you have a DEI office, Chris, or is it called something else? Yes, and Pamela is here. She's the director of DEI, oh. Tem Pamela Young, yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm joining you for the first time. I'm Pamela Young, and I'm the director of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Oh, uh, so <laughs> I'm, I've been in the background listening in because uh, I'm not quite certain what role you want our office to play. But uh, as far as the work on translation and interpretation uh, services, uh, Brianna and I, the communications director, are hoping to get a plan in place um, I'll say if not by the end of this fiscal year, by the early and the, the over the summer and the beginning of the new fiscal year. Great. And I will just go ahead. Add, oh, I'm sorry. I'll just add one other thing, which is that I think that um, the Disability um, um, Access and Advisory Committee would also be a partner on some of these initiatives, uh, especially oh, those that deal with uh, um, vision impairment or. Uh, and hearing impairment. So. Thank you. That's, yeah, that's a good point. Um, Back to 10 1, you could put down the senior center is already working with UMass. Um, we're doing some interaction, uh, intergenerational programming. They're helping with the dementia cafe and with the tech training. Just two things that are coming to mind. Okay, great. These are just notes I'm going to incorporate. Um, so Pamela said some things about DAAC that might relate to the previous um, section. DAA. DAAC yes. is a Disability Access and Advisory Committee. So okay. she said that those, uh, those people could help with some of these um, issues up here. I'm not sure exactly which ones Pamela was thinking of, but I just didn't want that comment to get lost. Yeah. Um, so I think it would um, definitely be a part of um, 8.2 um, and 8.4 as well, and um, probably 8.5 as well. It's DAAC, is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 8.2, 8.4, and 8.5? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. So, and you're doing trainings, right, Helen, on on recognizing um, on dementia for the for the community. Is that underway? Not the community. We certainly are working with staff. I'm sure the community training is being planned. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you, does anyone do dementia friends trainings there? Not at this point. Okay, that's 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 a nicely accessible one that um, the Jewish Family and Children Services offers trainings online or in person. Um, and for a one hour training, you become a dementia friend and for an hour and a half, you become a dementia friend champion and then you can train others. Um, so they have a nice kind of a, a system for doing that um, that a lot of places are using. Um, okay. So going back to social participation and inclusion, um, I have continued to upgrade the bank center and municipal meeting rooms with equipment to assess people, assist people with audio or visual impairments. I'd say that the facilities department is working on that. And the MOD grants can help with that too. 
Is there someone at the facilities department one could get in touch with to uh, give them information about the needs of visually impaired people in public facilities? Well, there's only one person in the facilities department right now. We're hoping to get him some help, but right now he only is an individual who's kind of stretched. So All right. um, let me tell you what I'm thinking of, and then maybe you can you maybe you can uh, point us in the right direction. Many years ago, in an effort to help people, our sidewalks in town were. Uh, changed, uh, the, the paving was changed, supposedly to help people with visual handicaps. Um, one of the things that happened was that there were color changes and people who have no depth perception, when there's a color change, don't know whether there's a fall off of a foot or an inch or no fall off at all. They, they see the color change, but they don't have the depth perception. So whoever kindly did the planning um, hadn't really consulted with people who had the problem they were trying to help. And I'm not at all sure who that is within the town. So for sidewalks, that's usually the public works department. And I think they're going um, in the direction of having all concrete sidewalks and they're doing away with the brick edging. So the sidewalks will be more typical like uh, you would find in other towns. So we're not gonna have those brown bands across the sidewalks anymore. Okay, I, I'm simply, I, I guess I'm asking the question, um, the person who makes the plans about anything that has to do with pedestrians, do they have some way to communicate with or ask people on the disabilities committee whether their plan is a good plan for the people they're trying to help? Well, we are communicating with Pamela and the um, DAAC, the planning department and the DPW. We try to communicate with Pamela and DAAC when we have a new plan. Um, I think we've brought at least one plan to Pamela recently for the North Common and DAAC had some comments about that. So that's kind of an ongoing effort is to try to bring plans to DAAC. And recently we brought the Jones Library to them. So they had many that, comments about exterior and interior circulation at the Jones Library for the improvements that are being planned. So Good. It's, it's an ongoing effort. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like that's a, a good role for the DAAC. Yes. Um, OK, we have support expansion of parking near the Bang Center. Um, I think that came up in comments in terms of, you know, people participating at the bank center that said it's saying there wasn't enough parking. Um, we're just finishing a study on whether it's possible to expand the Boltwood garage. So, um, we're going to be giving that report to the town manager and then we'll see where it goes from here. But that's something that people have been curious about for years, whether it's possible to expand the Boltwood garage. Um, and then collaborate with the Amherst Media and other senior centers and local cable access stations to offer online and hybrid meetings and social and fitness programming that can be accessed online or rebroadcast on cable access TV. Is that something that's already happening, Helen? Not that I'm aware of, but I, I don't want to say I'm the final um, source of information. So it could be that that's being worked on. Norma? Norma? Yeah, we do have exercise classes. I've been doing it for two years now on Zoom. Okay. Um, so. Is it uh, on cable TV too, though? It is. Well, Jamie Chernoff is one of our 
leaders and she uh, has taped several of them. Like she's in Mexico now and has been transmitting from there, but um, you know, we'll be, we'll be back. But if someone's out sick, they don't have really substitutes. And so um, they put it on Zoom um, and you can just get it at, at the website for Amherst. So. Okay. Great. So we do have a lot of uh, programs available on Zoom. We just haven't connected with the Amherst Media, to my knowledge, yeah. okay. um, to have them broadcast. Yeah, I mean, even so a lot of times the local cable um, stations will have just recorded programming. So you can go to their website to, to get that kind of thing. Um, so I guess that's, that's more what we're looking at. Um, yeah, access online or rebroadcast. And then we have establish a memory cafe and other activities for people with dementia and their caregivers, um, such as adult date programs, creative music, arts, intergenerational connections, outings, and group activities, respite care. And then meaningfully engage people with dementia in developing programs and services whenever possible. So the senior center does have a memory cafe going right now. Um, okay. That's, okay. My, that's it's a weekly, if you want to call it a weekly memory cafe, it was once a week on Wednesdays. Okay. So that would be a good, a good group to work with to see if they want any other kind of programming. Um, is that something you think you might you working toward um that one Haley oversees that one so you probably want to get back to Haley about exactly what her thinking is on that but I'm sure she would want to survey that that group yeah okay um then we have work with the library to train staff and provide programming for people with dementia um is that another one Haley's working on Again, I don't know where she is with that. Okay. Um, Check in with her. Um, and then provide information about accessibility of facilities and transportation options for community meetings and events. Uh, that's something that the, just the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion office is looking into. So, and it would be open to all residents. So. Great. Okay. Um, so any of these that rise to the top, you know, some of it, some of it overlaps with the one above. Um, sounds like this one is underway, the language translation. And Meeting room upgrades is, or meeting rooms that should be underway. Um, I think I'll put this one as higher just because you're working on it now. Okay. Well, um, let's see, just two more. So we'll, we'll go through these and then um, I'm happy to take any comments later um, or if anyone wants to you know, look in more depth at any of these and, and give me comments later, that's great too. Um, okay, so we have, This is again, a similar thing. So it's um, developing a policy for translation and interpreter services, as well as outreach to non-English speakers to ensure inclusion of all residents in public discussions. So that's the same as the other two, I think. Um, and then consider implementing an age and dementia-friendly business certification program using the Age Strong Boston checklist as a model. Um, that's a really, great tool. I think I, I think I showed that at one of our, um, one of our forums, but they look at, you know, 
practices, um, the built the inside environment, outside environment, and they have a number of, of different things to, to look for for businesses. Um, and then they, I think, actually provide a certification. So that that might be something in the long term. Um, maybe you know the senior center working with the chamber of commerce, or um, is there a business association, or there is a chamber of commerce. Okay. Um, and then develop intergenerational skill building and mentoring opportunities with. I guess this would be the senior center, um, community groups and local schools. Um, so that's, again, I think we've, we've talked about that in previous ones. Um, so um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you sure. might want to add um, the disability, the diversity, equity, and inclusion office for 11.3. Uh, both okay. uh, the DEI office and CRESS are hoping to have an AmeriCorps volunteer to work on youth empowerment and other youth programming. So that might also be a place for support. Great. Great. And did you uh, did you say the um, Disabilities Commission too, or just the DEI and CRESS? Uh, DEI and CRESS are working okay. on youth, youth programming. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, and then connect people with volunteer programs through RSVP and expand opportunities for property tax reduction in exchange for hours worked. I think you already have that program, right, Helen? Yes. Well, we have a tax work off program. Um, mm -hmm. That is. Which is really not necessary. I'm not, the wording was uh, through RSVP. Um, they're really two separate programs. What okay. is RSVP? I'm not familiar. Retired with Senior Volunteer Program. Oh. And it's a regional volunteer program. Uh, actually, it's a federal program out of the Community Action um, up in Greenville, who also ironically does fuel assistance. And they have federal funds to, um, well, one, they look for volunteer opportunities more regionally. So say someone's a retired accountant and maybe the senior center doesn't need accountant, but uh, RSVP might know of a, a volunteer opportunity for that retired accountant at someplace else, like maybe at Cooley Dickinson. Um, so they're really looking for opportunities across the whole Pioneer Valley. They also pay, uh, they pay mileage to the volunteers. So if they have a long commute and they want to um, put in for the mileage, they'll get that 50 cents a mile. And they also have some other supports for the volunteers uh, to encourage them to volunteer. Really like but the, what, what the tax worker program is totally separate from the RSVP program. Okay. Um, um, yeah, some some senior centers like will go through RSVP to offer volunteer opportunities, and yeah. I'm astounded. I've been volunteering in this community. I'm 87. I've been volunteering since I'm 60. And I have never heard of the RSVP program. Who knows about it? How do they how do they reach out? Where is it? You know, <laughs> I'm just astounded. I've never heard of the program. Well, it is, um, we know about it here and we do have flyers around the senior center. Uh, there's probably a little bit of, um, they're often looking for the same volunteers we are. So that's always this interesting thing, a senior center looking for volunteers and so is RSVP. So there's always that issue there, but we certainly um, have their fly here and talk about them. Uh, and it would be probably more the volunteer that wants to volunteer outside of the senior center who might wait, although they could volunteer here, but they might be volunteering somewhere else and driving somewhere else to volunteer. Yeah. We have flyers here. They only unfortunately have one person that covers the Pioneer Valley doing outreach, going to all the volunteer fairs. Uh, I know her well. So it may be why I haven't heard about it, Anne. Um, As I said, I'm, I'm astounded. I volunteered three different places. And I've never heard of it. And people have asked me, what are the volunteer opportunities? I haven't had a, you know, if I knew that that existed or where it existed, I would be able to tell them. Right. So here I'd I be see. willing to tell you more about it at some other point, too, because I'm, I'm and, very familiar with it. And um, also our tech volunteer, the person uh, who does the uh, tech training, who's a senior, is an RSVP volunteer. 
I, I think what I'm telling you is that you need to communicate that RSV okay. exists. So well, we okay. Better than having flyers available at the senior center. Well, we could have their outreach person come and do a speech. Speech yeah. at the senior center, I think. Yeah. And I could I know her personally, so I could certainly uh, work on that. Okay. I'm I'm gonna stop again. Okay. I'm gonna stop again. <laughs> at age sixty or sixty-five. I looked for volunteer opportunities. It would never have occurred to me to walk into the senior center to find them. So something is wrong if the brochure exists in the senior center. That is not necessarily where people go. I think Amherst Neighbors oh. need to know about RSVP. A lot of other places need to know that there is some central way of finding out what the volunteer opportunities are uh, happen. It needs to be all around, it needs to be in the library. It needs to be- Right. We could even put something in our next newsletter too, so that pe people have that information. How about in the Gazette or the Amherst Bulletin right. Reminder or the online newspaper? I mean, there are so many places to communicate with people and uh, I'm, if I'm being passionate about this, it's that it seems to me very, uh, this is not an accusation of you, but it seems to me very complacent ever to say, well, we have brochures about it in the senior center. That is not outreach communication at all. I'm finished with my speech. <laughs> Thank you, I've heard you, and I personally love RSVP, and I'm friendly with their regional coordinator. So I'll see what I can do personally to get that information out more to the Amherst community. Thank you. Yeah, and it's it's helpful to get this feedback because you know if if we don't know that others don't know, you know that that the information is out there. It kind of speaks to the communication aspect of you know our our. Are we communicating in enough places and enough ways, you know, because not everyone looks at brochures or looks at the website or, you know, so it's um, using different, you know, multiple means of communication is really important. Actually, I'll, I, I do want to defend them a little bit. And they did have a table at our open house. So, um, you know what, I, I'm, I, I'm, I am passionate about this. There, PBS does a lot of things on community stuff. They are really looking for people to interview. Um, if someone wrote to them, uh, there were that people, some people still read newspapers. Other people go to the Amherst Indy online. Mm -hmm. There's PBS. There are lots of ways to communicate other than having tables and brochures. You do all of the work of putting together a program and then think people are going to kind of stumble across you. You really need to reach out to what people happen to be seeing or looking at. There are, you know, you can get free advertising on commercial television. You just make public service announcements. If you don't know how to do it, then you get together with lots of other towns and other organizations and with a teeny bit of money from each of your budgets, hire a professional. But the communication really is not there and expecting a wonderful program. If you've got this RSV program, it's wonderful, but expecting people to stumble across it is it doesn't do the program justice okay again my passion is Th so. thank you Anne, and I'll, i certainly will do what i can in my end and pass it along to rsvp too thank you. looks like christina has her hand up yeah christina yes um i basically did a a quick search of the RSVP program. And the only 
in this state, the only city, well, there's a few, but the one that is most actively on the internet is the RSVP program in the Berkshire County. There is nothing in Western Mass in our area on the internet or anywhere posted, but the Berkshire one is everywhere. Huh. It's posted on various websites. That's, and I well, think that's that interesting. Is, I think this is what Anne is trying to say. You know, I did a quick search and said, oh, good, let me look for it. And it just doesn't exist. So you're saying Ber the Berkshire chapter is very visible, but nothing else is online. Yes, that's right. correct. Yeah, that's good to know. We'll we'll definitely let them know. Um, yeah, because they're I think they're based in Northampton, right, Helen? They they are. Yes. That's yeah. a surprise. They're under community action out of Greenfield, but their physical offices are in Northampton. Okay. And did you have something else? Your hand's still up. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. I will take um, it. And it is six o'clock. We have one more section. Um, do you want to look at this or how's your timing looking? Is everybody able to stay a little later and go through this last section? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Right. John, you had a, John has a question. Yeah, I, I, I want to raise this before we conclude, but you can hold it till we go through the last section. And that is, I, I should be clear on this, but I'm not. Um, what's happened with comments on the prior sections or are you still making changes in that in preparation for doing the final report we and i wanted to go ahead i wanted to piggyback on john before i forgot because i was looking at the um what you probably reviewed at prior meetings it was a section on crest and this got me thinking of crest here we're talking about right here that talked about the um it called the crest responders social workers so it's more of a legal uh, point to make is that no one in the state of Mass can be called a social worker unless they have a license. Um, so just the wording uh, for the Crest section, it was page 47, Becky. Okay. Uh, the, under the Crest section where it mentions social workers a couple of times. I don't know what they technically call themselves, like community outreach workers or whatever, but they, they can't legally call themselves social workers. And we certainly wouldn't want to put it in the final press on this. Uh, on this and john in response to you john um i after the last meeting we made changes to the the goals and actions and incorporated those into the report and into the action plan so if there's anything i missed definitely let me know um but the those changes were incorporated before i sent this out again okay i guess i need to hunt that in my mail thanks Okay. Um, yeah, and I can send this out again after the meeting. Um, it would be great if if you know you all can read through it. I know it's it's a lot, um, or just even pick a section and read through and let me know if if there's anything that you see that's glaring or any other um, suggestions. Um, so we have those comments. Um, so public safety goals and actions um, ensure the safety of all residents, including older adults and people with dementia through multi-sectoral partnerships and programming. Um, post information on the triad program on both senior center and police department websites to educate residents about file of life and other important documents. Encourage residents to keep their file of life documents updated regularly. Now, I'm hoping that's correct. There is a triad program, right, Helen? Yes, yes, there okay. is. Okay. And so the senior center and the police department are already working together. Okay. Um, we just got a new supply of file life uh, cards here recently. They're in short supply, like everything else in the pandemic, but we're able to get our hands on a few boxes of them. Okay. And you know, that's come up as a priority in other communities. I wasn't sure if file life, if that's, if you think that's a, a pretty big priority here. I do know that uh, one of the fire department personnel was hoping to work on that program. Uh, they were out on sick leave, but someone in the fire department would actually want to carry carry that out. So I don't know if they're looking for anyone else to take her place on that. I know she wanted to work with us. Okay. And you have your hand up. Okay. I am. I am right now hereby 
volunteering to help the fire department and police department learn how to communicate with seniors. <laughs> that is what I have done as a professional through my whole life. I have national awards for it. I am here, I am available. I cannot break down their door. Are and you I'm saying, angry. Uh, I'm you, really, really, really passionately angry that this town has not done anything to really communicate. And you want to say a little more about that, Anne? I, um, yes. I, what, I, I what's your you to tell whoever it is to tell the police and fire department that I'm willing to sit down and have a meeting and help them learn how to communicate these very important things with our entire population, our senior population or anybody else before I die. <laughs> Anne, um, is, am, I, am I muted? No, I'm not muted. Okay. Um, I would like to uh, invite you to our next meeting of the SALT Council, which is probably going to be your easiest access from seniors to the police department. And at this point, um, members, uh, younger members of the fire department are uh, coming around to the idea of also uh, participating in SALT. Uh, and, and so that apparently it looks like you've had trouble communicating with police and fire departments in the past. And, uh, so I, I offer this as, as, as a doorway of, of access for you. I, uh, whatever the access is, this is my skill and it, and I, I have been, hmm. I'm available. That's all. It when is, do you know roughly when, Dennis, the next uh, SALT Council meeting is? Uh, let me check into that. We could get Anne invited or certainly get her invited right after this meeting so she, she has that connection immediately. Yeah. We've got May. So it could be. Hang on a Dennis is right, Anne. If you join the SALT Council, that will get you connect. That'll start getting you connected to the right people, and get you certainly... connected right away. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I would be okay. Happy. I I don't. I fear that the next meeting might be in uh, maybe October, but. I don't think so. I think we probably have another one coming up in June. And that might be the one that we. Will it be posted somewhere? I don't believe so, but I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll find out exactly uh, when the next SALT meeting will be, and I'll get to you as a matter of, I'll, I'll, I'll notify you directly. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Okay. Great, Dennis. Thanks for making that connection. Very welcome. Sorry, everyone. I got bumped off. <laughs> Unstable internet. I got cut off. And hi, so, Chad. I see you're here. Hi, Chad. Um, so I can go back. Uh, do we have time or do you want to um, just continue at a, another meeting? Hi, Chad. Do people feel like they can uh, kind of whiz through yeah. these last five points? Okay. Okay. Let's just open that up again. Sorry for the interruption. Um, okay, so we have that. Um, so Anne's going to connect with Salt, and so is it called Salt then in Amherst, not Triad? No, it, the local chapter is called Salt. It's. Uh, I think it means uh, sen seniors and law enforcement together. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, that's exactly it. It falls under uh, under the umbrella organ organization of Triad. Okay, great. Um, 
And then ensure that regular trainings are available for all emergency personnel on recognizing the signs of dementia and how to communicate with people with dementia. Um, so I know Alzheimer's Association mm -hmm. offer those, offers those yes. regularly. Um, is that um, something that Chris is becoming involved with? Because I had a person in my neighborhood who had dementia and I spoke with um, Earl from Cress, and he said that would be something that he would be able to um, help with. The oh, woman great. moved away, but I definitely got the impression that Cress would help with those issues. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Um, so I'll I'll put them in there. Um, Anne, did you have another comment or your hands up? No, I'm sorry, oh. I keep forgetting about taking my hand. Okay. okay. Um, and then we have work with the triad program to develop a database of people living with dementia or other health concerns and encourage people with dementia and family members to register for this list. Is that something that the SALT or triad has talked about? Um, it comes up as sort of a registry in some other communities. I do know right now, um, I certainly as a social worker here encourage people to register with the police. Okay. Uh, I, I'm assuming their database is shared with the fire department and emergency, other emergency services. So I have, if I have any caregivers with anyone that's, uh, especially a wanderer, I really urge them to call in ahead of time and, and register their, their loved one that's a wanderer. Again, yeah, I, think I think Chris is doing something about that because when I spoke with Earl, he said they're starting to make their own list of people who have dementia and might be wanderers and they'd be right. familiar with them. Now, when you say work with triad partners, I mean, certainly working directly with police, fire, emergency services, and CREST is great. Uh, I, I certainly, as a social worker, would not want to see any lists of people uh, being shared with volunteer groups uh, names because yeah. that's highly confidential. So, yeah. Yeah, that, no, it would only be with um, emergency personnel. Right. So, I think it would be good to write ensure confidentiality. Okay. Um, and then continue to educate older adults about what to do in the case of an emergency. Um, I imagine that's something that SALT does. Continue to collaborate with law enforcement in Amherst Senior Services and CREST to coordinate calls from older residents who need regular check-ins or have safety concerns. And that's ongoing now. That is ongoing. That is ongoing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. As, a, as a town or senior center social worker, I found Crest really, uh, we work very well together. Uh, yeah. It's been working yeah. well. Great. Okay. Um, I'm getting the note, my, my internet's unstable again. <laughs> Just in case I get bumped <laughs> off. Um, okay, this has been great. So I guess from here, um, let me just stop sharing. Um, good for, for folks to take another look. Oh, go ahead, Dennis. Thank you very much. Uh, to, uh, I, I was able to confirm the next meeting of, uh, of, uh, SALT Council is, will be the 10th of October, uh, for a variety of reasons, but we'll be taking the summer break, uh, and, and we'll be resuming that mm. will be our next meeting. Mm. That does not prevent you from communicating, let's say directly with me and, so that you can you can talk to me and I can communicate with other members of the of the of, of, of the council, also through Dick Yorga, who's the president of the of the Salt Council, and also another idea that I came up with that you, you might be uh, helpful uh, might be helpful for you is that with Cress, uh, an awful lot of uh, the let's say nonviolent stuff uh, or. Uh, uh, would uh, would also in, probably also include senior citizens, and so that might also be another organization that you might be very interested in talking to, uh, helping them to communicate with uh, senior citizens. So that's that's my two cents on that. Okay. Okay, I will I will try to be in touch with you, Dennis, and maybe we could just have it has nothing to do with the open meeting law. Maybe we can just sit down and have a conversation and I can begin to draw up something or bring to the attention of your people sure. uh, some material that would be useful. 
That, that would be fun. You can reach me at dennisvandal at gmail.com anytime. That's my email address. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, Jean or Helen, how, how would you like to proceed with, with additional comments? Um, is, is receiving, you know, a digital version useful to folks? Um, or is there a need to have another meeting? How do you want to proceed? I would suggest that um, digitally would be great. I think this is something that we will revisit um, when the Council on Aging meets again to check in because not, not everybody was able to participate um, tonight. And I also think with some time, sometimes other ideas come to mind. So, um, you know, we would look to do this, you know, another kind of once over, if you will, and then pass along any additional um, suggestions or revisions to you, if, if that's amenable to you, Becky. Okay, that sounds good. And does that have, you said there's, um, we're closing in on June. So would you plan that before the end of June, Jean, that next meeting? Oh. Our next meeting will be in June because the right. Um, so you would do that during your regular meeting and not a special COA meeting. Right. Okay. Right. Um, At I this think point I don't know that uh, I don't know that there would be a multitude. Uh, yeah, we'll do it at our regular. Okay, turns that makes out, sense. A, you know, we run out of time. We can certainly then schedule an additional one. That makes sense. And then I'll touch base with Haley there, you know, we had a whole working group for the agent dementia friendly project and just make sure they receive a copy to anyone who's not on the COA. I think, I think this meeting invitation went to everyone, not mistaken, um, but just want to make sure everyone who, who was on that list gets a, gets an opportunity to read it and comment, um, especially like departments that were including in the action plan. Um, <laughs> Make sure they see that. Okay. Any other comments, questions, John? I just say, Becky, I did get uh, a copy of the plan. It came from Haley rather than you. So it took me a, a little bit of time to search it, but it came about two weeks ago. Okay. So if I have it, I assume other people have it as well. Okay. Um, Ann and then Chad. <clears throat> Are you still have your, okay, Chad. <laughs> Hand up to us. All right. I don't know if this is too detail oriented, but um, I'm still wondering um, about dispatch. Uh, I don't know if uh, the police have figured out whether they're going to, um, you know, in terms of an organizational chart, be above Crest for calls and decide whether to dish them out to Crest or not. Is this uh, too detailed a question? Well, I can I give you a brief highly... answer. I could I give you a brief answer on that, Chad. I think it's highly important whether they come directly to Crest, directly to, to the police, just how that is managed uh, in the in the um, fraction of a second that uh, crisis is is there. So, sorry, um, go ahead. Uh, I just happened to be speaking to Scott about that, the police chief, uh, this morning about that very topic, um, and he's talking about their nine one one. Uh, receptionists or you know who take these calls are getting training now and will continue to get more training to make a distinction where should these calls go should it go to the police and it is going to be you know quick judgment or should it go to crest and then also ongoing crest sometimes he was just saying crest gets out on the call and sometimes they know it's going to have to go back to the police they contact the police vice versa crest the police will talk to crest so they're working on that and they're fine-tuning it right now my concern is um, the power dynamics in our uh, city that's a town where, um, you know, Northern uh, Europeans call for a sound disturbance um, and the, they really want uh, the police to be a valet and come clean up the mess for them. Uh, currently the police shoot somebody out right there our police do not walk the block, they're all in cars. So they get there, 
And, um, you know, we've had a lot of incidents where um, they haven't been as uh, culturally competent as Crest may be, and they've uh, inflated situations. If a dispatch person was able to say, hey, you know, that's just the way uh, different people, um, you know, um, whatever, barbecue. Um, it's not a law violation. We're not going to come out there. Um, which I think Cress is a lot better at handling. So I, I don't know how to word it, but. Um, I don't know if Pamela has any more comments or thoughts on that at all. I don't want to take us over the break. Uh, what is it? Or oh, whether it's, it's it's really kind of going beyond the agenda of this meeting. Okay. All right. Uh, but it's certainly an important topic, so I don't want to. Yeah, I don't know about action steps. You know, my concern is, uh, as uh, Jean said, is one and done, one more meeting. These are things that need to be chewed on for a good long time. Uh, my thought uh, from the very beginning when I heard of this survey was that it could be a strategic plan for the senior, um, the Council on Aging. So uh, anyway, um, I hold the rest Thank of my God comments. God for another meeting, Chad. Yeah. Mm. Uh, just, um, it, and yeah, I, I encourage everyone to, to look at the action plan and the report as much as you can, you know, pick a section if you're interested in a particular area. Um, and and do bring comments to the next meeting. Um, also think about you know what are what are priorities either you know a certain domain area housing transportation you know wh what are the sort of the top three priorities if you could pick from the whole the whole plan um, yeah. for the town and it doesn't necessarily have to be the council on aging senior center. What do, what do you think the town needs to do? Um, so we can really sort of lift up a few um, a few priorities. So. <laughs> so yeah, I, st I still don't see that being done in, in a uh, uh, very time limited um, manner. That's why I say a strategic plan, which is several uh, several years, usually two to three years. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'll look to you, Gene, to decide, you know, when you want to close the meeting, if, if we feel like we've finished, Becky, going over things. I've, I've gotten through the stuff we're, I was we're, gonna... we're looking at an hour and a half now, so we yeah. said we'd yeah. not go I think over. Out of respect for everyone's time, I think we can um, call it an evening. Becky, I just want to say thank you so much for your time, and clearly you've put in a tremendous amount of work on this, and uh, it's exciting to see it kind of unfold and um, for everyone else who's here, who is involved in the planning, appreciate your, your efforts. I think um, it's gonna be incredibly beneficial for our town and our community as we look to improve and be more supportive of folks who are, um, you know, dealing with dementia. So thank you and uh, appreciate everybody's time this evening and your, your input. It's uh, appreciated and valued and more to come. So have a lovely evening. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Adjourn. All right. Take, Take care, care, everyone. Take care, everyone. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night.